Good morning, everyone. Well, I'm back in a, another familiar spot here. <clears throat> it's liable to get noisy here real soon. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to get this done or not. We'll find out. <clears throat> They're trying to mow the lawn. It's been... It rained for a number of days, then it stopped, and the grass just started growing. Leaps and bounds. So we're going to see if I can get this done before they start making noise. They started yesterday. I had to move my antenna. <clears throat> but it's too big to do in one day. This park is, so they're continuing to cut. Okay, so we're going to talk about the rapture. I know, we've talked about it enough times before. But if I get new people, I want to make sure I get everybody on the right page. There's confusion, there's misinformation. Satan gets in there and gums up the works. He's, if he can give you doubt, I mean, he did that in the beginning. Did God really say that when he talked to Eve? Is that what he meant? You gotta trust him. So anyhow, we're gonna talk about the rapture. Now, I'm going to start off with a couple of other verses. This is going to be a lot of verse coverage here because I don't want you to have my opinion. So turn with me to John 14, 3. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you may also be where I am. Where is he? Heaven. So Jesus is going to bring us to him. He will come and bring us to him. That's the key. We don't have to go to him. He will bring us to him. Now, Philippians 3.20 But our citizenship is in heaven. I tell you all the time, don't worry about what's going on down here. Anything that you have possession-wise, God can replace it a million times over. I mean, he took everything away from Job, and when he finished with Job, he had more than he started with. God can do that. Now, maybe we don't need something, so we, you know, we lose it, and we think we're in bad shape, but God didn't want us to have it in the first place, or he's got a different path. We may use something up to a point, and then all of a sudden we don't need it anymore. you got to trust him. He knows what he's doing. And we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ. From there, heaven. Who, by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control, everything, will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body, the one that's in heaven. We can't go to heaven with these bodies. I don't know what heaven is, where it's at, you know. But apparently we can't go there with these bodies. And these are the sinful bodies that we've lived with all of our lives anyway. The ones we inherited from Adam. What is he doing? Go park on the other side and start cutting over there. <laughs> there we go. Okay. <clears throat> so now we're going to look a little bit at the Old Testament. Pretty much everything that's in the New Testament is in the Old Testament, except for the actual things that we saw Jesus do. A lot of it's covered in the Old Testament, but a lot of it wasn't. And even the Bible says that there were many more things that he did than what was covered in the Bible. However, I digress. Daniel 12, 1. At that time, Michael, the great prince who protects your people, will arise, and there will be a time of distress such as not happened from the beginning of the nations until now. You ain't seen nothing yet. Everyone whose name is found written in the book will be delivered. If you're a Christian, your name's in the book. If you're not a Christian yet, but God knows you're going to become a Christian, he may have your name already written in the book. 
because he knows everything. There's a fisherman coming in. Okay, so we're going to look at 1 Thessalonians 4.13. The best place for rapture verse would be this one. And he's covering a, a number of topics here. The final removing of, of his people from the earth. 1 Thessalonians 4.13 But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those that have fallen asleep. People have died. That's their term for falling asleep. And we mourn their loss when they die. Their bodies are dead, but their spirit isn't. Lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. We have hope. Jesus is the hope. So we have no reason to be sorrowful for anything. If someone's taken from us, it's only for a little while. If they're Christians. If they're not Christians, God's grace will have to be sufficient for now. 414. That was 413, 414. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. Those that are dead, that are Christians, will be brought to him. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. We're all going to go up together. For the Lord himself will ascend from heaven with a shout and the voice of the archangel. And with the trumpet of God, the dead in Christ will rise first. So he would get everybody up. We're all getting new bodies anyway. So it doesn't matter the dead have no bodies or what's left of them. It doesn't matter. We're getting new ones. So they're going to have their new bodies when they're brought to Christ. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together. Caught up is the Greek word harpazo, or harpazo, depending on how you want to say it. And that is translated into Latin to rapturo, and that's where we get the word rapture. Rapture is not in the English Bible. Neither is Trinity, neither, neither is Omni. In fact, the word Bible is not in the Bible, so we don't need to go into that. Again. Okay, we'll be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. This is not his second coming. His second coming is described later on in, well, Matthew covers it, it's covered other places. You will see him, the whole world will see him in the sky. This rapture, only the Christians see him. That's why they don't know where everybody's at. If they saw God coming down and pulling his people up into the clouds, they'd know where they were at and they won't be able to make up some stupid story about aliens. Together with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and thus we shall always be with the Lord. So once we get raptured, we're with Jesus the rest of our lives and that's eternity. Therefore comfort one another with these words. Don't worry about what's going on down here. Don't worry about people dying. Don't worry about the wars and rumors of wars. Don't worry about any of this stuff. Famines, all that stuff. Jesus said, don't worry about it. Let's move forward to Revelation 3.10. Because you have kept my command to persevere, to endure, to suffer through these times that we're going to be in. I will also keep you from the hour of trial which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. Better known as the tribulation. See, we're not going to be here for that. Anybody who says that we're supposed to go through the entire tribulation, they have false doctrine. And it is so false that they're so adamant about it, they're willing to wrestle me to the ground, fight with me, argue with me, 
and they're not going to budge. It's so programmed into their brain. It is so false that they've had to basically throw everything out to make it true. We're not going to stick, go through the tribulation. The world will. There will be Christians during the tribulation that will become Christians during the tribulation and they will go through some of it. Some will be martyred, but some will survive. Many are going to die during these, quote, tribulation times. And as I told you before, the 70th week is not the tribulation. That's what the people of the past have coined it. So whenever they say tribulation, they mean the full seven years. It's not. Only the first half has the term great tribulation assigned to it. The first half doesn't. Okay, and then the one verse that we're all very familiar with, and I'm not going to read the whole story. You've already read it enough times. But go read Revelation 12 if you want to get all of it. 12.5 Revelation. She wore a male child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up, same Greek word, harpazo, to God in his throne. So when Satan's coming after us, because he can't proceed, he can't bring the Antichrist down here, he can't do anything, he can't go any further. He can corrupt the world, which is what he's doing. He's using the harlot and the beast to do that. But he can only go so far, and he's getting impatient. Right now, he's really impatient. And he's going to be bringing the Antichrist to the surface here soon. Someone's going to get shot. One of the seven kings, one of the seven wealthy, influential people in the world. They're not kings because they truly don't have crowns, but they're like kings, which means they've got to be wealthy. That's an interpretation. But I can't come up with any other ones. If you can, let me know. But they're, they're called kings, but they don't have crowns. So one of the seven, and there's, there's more billionaires than seven, but there are influential billionaires. Where is he from? He's of Roman descent, but where is that from? I don't know. Everybody has some place they're from, but we're all frankly go back to that era someplace the Roman Empire covered pretty much North Africa all the Mediterranean covered a lot of area many of the people that are here today on in the United States came across are probably descendants of that some degree. You'd have to go back a long ways, but the Roman Empire was a long time ago, a couple thousand years ago. So how do we know? For instance, I'm not saying he's the Antichrist, and there's nobody alive today that's the Antichrist. He, his body may become the Antichrist. So any of these billionaires that are alive or trillionaires that are alive today if they're killed and are resurrected, that would be a candidate for the Antichrist. But they've got to be killed and resurrected first. You can't just be killed, that won't work. You can't just be a billionaire, that won't work. So I'm just giving you this as an example. Elon Musk is kind of from Canada, but he's in the United States. But he was born in South Africa. So you see, you can't just look at where somebody's at now. How does this South African family, where did they come from? There's no way you're going to figure this out. So just trust that the Antichrist is out there, alive today, doing his thing, helping the beast. In what ways? We don't know. I'm just looking around the park. We're close to people waking up. The one lady across the street from me with her trailers had her dogs out. 
I see a tent in the non-developed site. They don't look like they've gotten up yet. <clears throat> Here comes the ranger. He's probably going to drive down in here, but I'm almost done, so it doesn't matter. We're in the month of Av. Next week will be the 9th of Av. It doesn't line up with our calendar, so don't say we've already had the 9th. It's uh, the 12th and 13th. The 13th is the full day of it. The 12th in the evening is when it starts. That's typical Hebrew calendar. What's going to happen on that? Anything? We don't know. It's interesting that it's coming during a time of war. Iran has basically been warned that if they do any kind of attack that hurts civilians, that it's World War III and they're not going to stop until there's nothing left. Israel told them that. So they're afraid because they know what the world knows, that God has chosen Israel. They get away with what they can. But every time they go to war with Israel, they lose. Jordan didn't co did come in and say that they will support Israel by shooting down anything coming from Iran. That's good to hear. They did that the last time. They know that their future is limited. Because Muslims can read the Bible too. Some of it, small bits and pieces, are covered in the Quran. Jesus is in the Quran as a good prophet. Not the Son of God, just a good prophet. I don't know how you can be the good prophet and then claim to be God and then still be good, but the Quran is fiction. Written as a copycat Bible. And the devil's very effective with it. He's got his whole group there. There's a lot of Muslims in the area now. They're all looking for God. And if they find a copycat and they're not discernible, then they follow it. And that's exactly what they've done. But Jesus is for them too. Jesus came to the whole earth, not just to the Jews. He started with the Jews. They rejected him. We're included in that now. And anybody who accepts Jesus can get adopted into the family. get adopted, then he will come and get you and save you from all the stuff that's coming. Read chapter 6 in Revelation if you want to know the first part that's coming. We have the horsemen to start off with. It's not going to be pleasant. We can see that their power that they're grabbing is getting more and more. They're doing more and more to take over. We're not going to have any ability to stop it. We cannot stop Satan. You and me, we can't. We can make him leave us alone, but God's already given him power over the earth. So those that are non-Christians are his subjects. And we may be able to steal some away. And that's what our job is until we get out of here. But we can't stop Satan. We can prevent the Antichrist from doing his thing. But then that's why we're going to be out of here. It's the spirit in us. You know, until the restraining force is taken away, Satan can't proceed with his plan. And his plan is to Try, try world domination. He wants to be God. Well, to be worshipped as God, I should say. He knows he can't be God because God is everywhere bigger than he is. But he wants to be like God. He wants to be worshipped. And he will be for a short time. God's going to give him what he wants. Then he's going to cast him into the pit let him out one more time and then throw him into the lake of fire. He doesn't have a good future.
and he only has a limited time to do what he's going to do. So he's going to come out the gate running. Where did the ranger go? He must have stopped to talk to somebody. Okay, and I haven't heard the lawnmower, so God has been good to me this morning to get this video done. They're just a tad bit shorter than I've been doing. Because I can see the stats. Most people don't watch all the video. I'd rather you watch everything and be wanting more than to get so far through 80% through and go, okay, I've had enough to click. Now, some of you don't, and I appreciate that, but I've got to keep everybody happy. So, 20 to 30 minutes is my range. I've tried the hour, that's just too long. doing these every day and every day I try to do them they may not be unique every day because I've talked about the rapture in the past but this video I've sat down and written I have the script here on my computer uh. yeah, can we see it I don't know if you could read that but I can pick this up and I can get up with it. Ah. And here comes the ranger, so it's about time for me to say goodbye. We're going to see each other in the clouds soon. God bless.